Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Now today's video, um, I'm really excited about. Um, this is a recommendation from one of our followers or one of our fans, and they sent in a request over Instagram. Um, this was quite a while ago, but I said I'd make them this uh, a video for them. So if you're watching this video now, um, you know who you are. This video was made, um, dedicated for you. But um, it's a really, really interesting Instagram page. So we're doing it um, on this guy called Short Stash. Um, if you're not following him, I would thoroughly recommend going and following this account. I've just scrolled through it and honestly it's one of my new favourite accounts. I love every single one of his photos, it's just such a unique feed um, and such a unique editing style. So um, I'm really excited to try and show some of you guys how you can go ahead and edit um, similar to his style or in his style. Okay, so I would say before I jump straight into editing this, um, I am going to put out a request, um, because we've got so many videos we want to film and so many recommendations, if any of you have any recommendations of any videos you want us to film or anything, um, and you have a good raw file that is in the style of the same artist that you want it to be edited in, um, so for example if you have something in the style of this artist and you want me to edit inside of this, um, feel free to email us the um, the raw file with the request of the video and we will edit it for you and we'll send it back to you so you can go ahead and post it on your Instagram account. Um, that way it just makes it a little bit easier for me to go ahead and find some photos because it's really hard for me to, I don't have so many raw photos for myself um, and also it'd be nice to edit some of your, your guys' photos. So if you do have any requests and you do have any raw files, feel free to send them in and I'll edit them for you in that particular artist style. Okay, so before we begin, this is my Instagram page here. Just do feel free to go ahead and follow me. I'm just Matthew underscore GKB. And also don't forget, go ahead and follow my brother's account. Um, he's Sebastian underscore JWB. So um, our links will be down below in the description. Okay, so if you're new around here, don't forget, go ahead and click that subscribe button now and turn on those post notifications. We will be bringing you lots of brand new videos this month. We're doing lots of stuff in Photoshop and on Lightroom. There's bound to be a video coming out for you. And if you have got any requests, um, we usually get around to filming your video request. Um, so do uh, click that subscribe button. Okay, so without any further ado, let's just jump straight into editing in the style of short stash. Okay, so the first thing that's probably worth noting is um, his photos that he takes. Now, lots of artists take photos of um, very similar things. It's usually landscape photography or something or portraits, um, which makes it a little bit easier for you to go ahead and edit. But somehow, um, this guy seems to take photos of pretty much anything he wants and can still keep his theme very consistent, which is why it was kind of hard for me to choose um, a, a photo that would work well. But um, I think I've got one. Now, this is the photo we're going to go ahead and use. We have featured this before in one of our videos. You might have seen it, um, some people editing it before as well. But um, as I said, if you do have a raw file, please do send them in and we will put them in one of our videos. But I feel like this one will work quite well with his theme. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and now discuss what he does in his photos. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and use um, this this photo here as our reference photo. Um, I will obviously go ahead and use different photos that he's taken um, just as a reference photo as well. But um, I do want to kind of focus on the, the sky. If you can see in this image, we've got a nice soft gray sky here. Um, and we've got the gray sky here. So I think we should be able to get some of these colors and this representation presented in our image. Okay, so before we do that, I just wanna point out what he does in all of his photos. So for example, if we look at this one um, here, you can see how dark all of his photos are. Pretty much every single one has got really hard, dark shadows, um, low exposure, um, and he really does not have really bright highlights. Now this look is probably usually achieved by the fact that he takes most of his photos during sunrise. Um, you can usually see that, um, for example, this one you can tell, this is like sunrise or late sunset kind of style photo. So usually taking gold now, which means you don't get those really sharp, solid, um, bright lights. So obviously if you've got a photo that's taken that kind of time, it can be much easier to get um, your photo in the style of um, short stash. Okay, so the next thing is if we look um, at this photo, for example, you can see how many shadows there are here. He does put a fade in the shadows. Um, you can see this is kind of faded out down here. And he also fades off those highlights. And you can see this because it's not really sharp um, highlights. Now, the next thing you probably want to look at is the colors that he uses in his photos. Now, you can see in pretty much every single one of his photos, he kind of goes to this kind of nice orangey brown and this orangey green kind of color. And then his blues are kind of more of like a greeny gray, and they're usually quite dark. So we don't really have many teals. Um, in the photos, lots of dark greens, lots of dark browns, pretty dark. Um, in terms of clarity, um, I'm not sure that he uses too much. He might use a tiny bit of uh, clarity in his photos just to bring out some of the sharpness. For example, here he might have a bit of clarity. Um, his images are usually pretty soft though. Um, but what we're going to do, I think, is put a little bit of clarity and just bring out a little bit of detail um, in the image. This one is a very similar style to the one we've got here. 
you can see it's got the mountain here and it's got these pine like these pine trees in the background here so what we're going to do is we're going to be using this one um, as our guide photo so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start off trying to get our basics panel so what we're going to do first is decrease the exposure just a tiny bit um, obviously this photo is pretty dark already so we're not going to have to do too much I'm just going to decrease it to about minus 0.20 now all of these settings I'm doing will depend on your photo. Obviously you just follow the same principles. Now in terms of the contrast on his photos, um, there is a bit of contrast. Um, I think what he's done is he's increased the contrast and then faded out the highlights and the shadows. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to increase the contrast a small amount. Um, again, not too much because uh, this one's a pretty dark image as well. Now we're going to increase those highlights, just bring them up a little bit, maybe to about plus 20, plus 25. Now what I am going to do is I am going to increase the shadows on this photo just a bit more, probably about 30, 40. Um, that's just so we can get a lot more detail in the shadows because if we bring it down too much and we put a fade in there, we're going to lose pretty much every single detail that's going on here and we won't get any of these nice colours out of the trees. So although you want your image to be dark, you don't want to lose all the detail. So I'm just going to bring it up to probably about 40, 45. Um, bring the whites up as well. And we want to bring have nice bright whites so we can fade those out um, when we get to our tone curve. Now, in terms of the blacks, we're not going to bring those up because that brings in so much more detail. Um, I'm going to bring those down just a bit so the dark blacks that we have in the corners of the trees here are really quite dark so we can fade those out when we get to the tone curve. Okay, so then we come down to the clarity, the vibrance and the saturation. Now, if we look at this photo, um, I think there's a little bit of clarity in the photo, but not much. He definitely hasn't taken the clarity down. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put probably about plus 30, plus 25 um, clarity in this image. You can see already that brings out a little bit more detail um, in the foreground and especially on the rocks and the trees. Um, okay, that's looking pretty good. Now in terms of the vibrance and saturation, it is a slightly desaturated look. And so I might bring the saturation down and the vibrancy up. So kind of do the opposite. Um, now we can obviously come back and change that. So we've got plus 17 and minus 17. We can come back and change it in a minute. But um, I'm thinking that that's going to be looking pretty decent to this image here that we're using as our reference photo. If anything, ours is still a little bit too bright, so I might just drop back that exposure back to zero. Oh, actually no, drop it back a little bit more, put it down to about minus 0.3, minus 0.4. We'll just we'll go with that. We've got to make sure our image is quite dark. Okay, immediately that's looking a lot more in his style. So if I do before and after, you can see we've just got a little bit more detail in the image, but we have maintained that contrast um, and that clarity. Now for the tone curve, um, this one's quite interesting because um, we do want to fade out the shadows and we do want to fade out the highlights. But um, in terms of what else he does on the midtones um, and the shadows and stuff, he doesn't really do too much. So what we are going to do is just put our standard three-point um, S-curve in. Okay, so now what I've done is I've tried to put um, a bit of a tone curve on this. It's a little bit of a really strange looking one. Okay, so I'm just going to leave the tone curve um, like that. It's quite hard to kind of control somebody's on this computer um, trying to get some fade in but I might come back and try and bring some fade in later on. We can also probably adjust the blacks as well to bring a little bit of fade in. So I'm gonna bring the blacks back up to zero. But I, okay, so we're gonna leave it at that. If I turn the tone curve off and on, you can see it has made a minor adjustment. I faded out those highlights, you can see, and I put a little bit of fade in the shadows. Okay, so we're getting closer to um, his, his look. Later on, I think we might go back and change the exposure back down again. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the hue, saturation, and luminance panel. Okay, so in this image, there's no red um, in this particular image, but if you look at some of his other images, um, any red colors is kind of brought more towards the pinky orangey side. So if you do have any reds, I'd, I'd bring them probably, well, adjust them a little bit to see what works best, but maybe towards the right, it might look a little bit better. Um, in terms of the oranges, we've got a lot of oranges in the tips of the trees here. Um, so if we get back our reference photo. Okay, so back to our reference photo here, you can see these oranges are really kind of a dark, burnt kind of brown kind of color. So these ones are a little bit too much green in them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the oranges right the way down to the left. And you see that brings a little bit more um, of the pink kind of color to it. And we're gonna do the same with the yellows and bring those down as well. The biggest change can be the greens. And we're gonna bring those down to the left as well because we don't want that vibrant green in there. All of his greens, he brings them all the way down to get this burnt kind of color. So go back and adjust the yellows and bring those down as well. And as well on the oranges. So now we've kind of got more towards that look. I might bring the oranges back up a little bit actually just to, yeah, that looks a bit better. We're getting more close to this kind of color. I'm looking in the trees here. Okay, now coming down to aquas, there aren't gonna be really many aquas in this image. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, but we don't be going for that teal kind of look when we adjust the blues. Um, 
So what we're going to do is bring the blues down a little bit, you can see in the smoke, just to make it look a little bit nicer, because if we bring it to the right we get a weird purple kind of feel. So bring it down a little bit. Now on the purples, um, that's the colour of the, the cliffs here. Now if you look, his cliffs look pretty blue, um, or his, his mountains rather, there's no like kind of purple to them. So what he's done here is he's brought his purples all the way down to the left, um, and he's adjusted his, his magentas probably to the left as well a little bit. So that's looking a little bit better. Okay, so now we're going to come down to the saturation panel. Now the saturation, we can leave the reds as they are. Um, what I am going to do is probably bring down the oranges a bit, um, but I'm going to bring up the yellows maybe to about plus four, plus five. Um, very subtle changes, but um, it does make a big difference overall when you look at the image. Um, and I'm going to bring the greens down a bit as well, maybe to about minus 30. So quite a bit taking them down. Now if you look at his colour of his sky here, um, it's very monochrome. He's taken the saturation of the blues pretty much down to zero. You can see pretty much all of his photos, there's barely any blue in the photo. If there is any blue, you can see here, he's kind of taken the saturation down so far and make the image quite dark that it's kind of more of a grey kind of colour. So a really interesting effect he's done. So we're going to bring the saturation of the blues all the way down to minus 100. And then we're going to come down to the luminance panel. Now with the oranges, I'm going to bring those up. That's just so we can bring out some highlights on some of the trees. Um, I'm going to do the same with the, the yellows as well, but with the greens I think I'm going to bring those down quite a bit, probably to about minus 50, minus 60. Now the blues, I'm also going to bring those down, probably to about minus 45, minus 50. Um, and probably bring the purples down as well, just to get some of that colour back in the sky. Okay, so in terms of his split toning, this is um, slightly more difficult for these photos because um, most of his shadows are pretty dark, that it's hard to see any colour in his shadows and it does really depend on the photo. So obviously this one, his shadow is going to be more green and his highlights are going to be kind of a little bit more greeny, um, orangey kind of colours. But um, on our reference photo, if I can find it, on our reference photo here you can see in his shadows it looks a little bit kind of bluer, um, maybe a little bit of green in the shadows as well. I um, mean his highlights, maybe a little bit of yellow but really kind of soft and subtle yellow in the highlights. So for our split tone, what I'd like to do is put up the saturation point about plus 10, plus 15 and then hold down the Alt key and drag it until we get to the, the colour that we want. So I'm looking for like a yellow kind of colour, yellowy orange. So probably around 50, 45 um, is probably pretty good for me. So I'm going to leave it at 52. Leave the saturation at 11 for the time being. Um, I don't want to change it too much. Maybe 13 should be good. Um, then on the shadows, again, I'm going to put the saturation up to about 15, 10. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Alt again and drag this across probably to the, um, the bluer, greeny side, and then let go like that. Now if I turn off the split turning, turn it on again, you can see immediately it's made a big difference to the photo. I think what we're going to do is we are going to bring down the shadow saturation a little bit, only leave it at about plus four, um, really subtle um, colours in those shadows. And I'm also going to bring down the saturation in the highlights probably as well, because our clouds are looking pretty yellow at the moment and I don't want that, so we're going to bring those down to put about eight. And there we go, looking pretty good so far. Now in terms of sharpening, um, what I like to do is usually put the sharpening up a little bit for the photos. Um, not too much, nothing too drastic, but probably to about plus 40, um, and then probably leave the radius on 1. We can leave the noise reduction, might put plus 5 on that just to smooth out the image, um, just to make it look a little bit softer. Um, in terms of the effects and the lens corrections, I'm going to leave those as standard. Then we're going to come down to the camera calibration and then start adjusting um, the red, green and blue primary. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to start with the green primary and we're going to bring this one to the right. Um, green primary sometimes makes the, um, the photo look a bit strange, but we're going to bring it up to about plus 58, plus 60. And then the red primary we're also going to bring to the right, just bring back the oranges um, in the trees. But then they're looking a little bit too orange, so we're going to bring the blue primary to the left, just to give them that more of that burnt kind of orangey kind of feel. So now if I turn the camera calibration off, and on, and um, it kind of brings out that um, the highlights, especially with the green primary here. Um, we can also bring up the saturation if we want. I'm going to bring it up a little bit to about plus 20, and then for the blue primary, I'm also going to bring it up to about plus 40, plus 50. Okay, so there we go. If I do before and after, it really does bring out those um, the highlights, especially on the trees and the grass. So already you can see we're really getting photo in his kind of style here. So that's basically everything done for the photo. What I am going to do now though is bring up the contrast a little bit more. Um, bring down those shadows a little bit just to make the image a little bit darker um, and bring up those whites and then I think we're basically done. Okay, so now I'm just going to do the before and the after. 
you can see immediately we've got a pretty big drastic change to the photo um, and we are definitely in his uh, his style here I really think this would work with his feed um, but again what I think I might do now is save this as a preset and I'll go and apply it to another couple of images so you guys can see what it would look like. Okay, so here is another photo that we're going to go ahead and try and edit with that preset we've just made. Um, this one is based on these like these waterfall photos he takes. I'll try and find another example. He takes quite a few of these ones. Okay, so this is the photo we're going to be basing off here. Um, this waterfall uh, photo that he's got going on here. So um, if I go back onto Lightroom here, now what we're going to do first off before we do anything to this image, I'm just going to apply a 4x5 aspect ratio um, on this image and then decrease it in a little bit. Okay, so now I've chosen our crump, I'm going to come down and apply this preset that we've just, just made in our previous edit and you can see already we've really got that nice burnt kind of orangey colour and we've got those faded out highlights and brought up the faded shadows. So it does work with a lot of images. The only thing I would say is you would want to go and tweak it a little bit because there's a little bit too much orange in this photo whereas in this one he's got a little bit of green and the blues look slightly different. Um, so what we will do now is just come back um, to the yellows and bring those up to the green side a little bit, maybe bring the greens up a little bit um, and then the oranges down towards the greens. Um, so you can see already we've got a little bit more um, to the green to the photo, less um, of that burnt kind of orange kind of colour. But you can see immediately um, the effect that that applies to his photo. Obviously you're going to want to go in ahead and change the um, exposure and stuff. We will bring this down just to make the photo a little bit darker. But um, you can see that the photo does work with pretty much all of the photos. Um, so. What, you, what I might do is make a preset pack that you can go ahead and just do some minor tweaks and minor adjustments. Um, um, and if you are interested in this, just um, post some things down in the comments so I know. I'll put a poll up on the screen up here now so you can go ahead and vote whether you want a preset pack for this. I will go ahead and put it on our website if you guys are interested. Okay, so just as a bit of fun, I've just applied it to a final photo here. Um, and just so you guys can see that it, this, these presets will work on multiple photos. Okay, so that is the end of today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. There's the photo in full screen so you can see it. Um, but I really hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, um, leave a massive thumbs up down below and let me know um, if you enjoyed the video. If you do want a preset pack for this, do go ahead and let us know in the comments um, and do go ahead and vote on the poll. And if you do, I will put a link down below in the description to the preset pack. Um, we will put that on the website. This one's going to be for Lightroom. And if you don't want to see a photo on how to edit like him on Photoshop, um, again, just let me know down below in the comments. So thanks for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll hopefully see you guys in the next video. Live long and prosper.